Realisms podcast, everybody. We are on episode 91. Whoa. I am I am Adam Chase Rennie. And I am Christine Chen. My goodness gracious. We are cooking, ladies and gentlemen. Literally, like the air is cooking in <laughs> Austin, Texas. It is insane. I literally walked outside and it was like I literally took a shower, took my dog out for a walk because he gets anxious around this time after he eats and shit Mm -hmm. so i take my dog outside and i'm immediately covered in sweat like just like head to toe just fucking like already doused in sweat and i literally took a shower this morning like i feel good and then when i walked outside and came back i felt like shit like had to get rid of all of my clothes change yeah it was yeah and i'm probably gonna take a shower after this I didn't remember Austin as being super humid. I, I know Houston was, but I guess it is. It's just today. I mean, yeah. yeah, it, it always, I mean, there's a level of humidity, I guess, because I'm always yeah. used to the Bay Area dry ass fucking weather and shit. Yeah. So, uh, and you still sweat. I mean, it still gets in the hundreds over in the Bay Area too at some point. Yeah. But I, like it got just abhorrently fucking sweaty. <laughs> like it just like, I it, it was not even like me just taking out the garbage like the other day. Yeah. It was like at seven at night or like eight at night. It was dark and I was sweating. <laughs> and then I and, and then sweating. and then now that I'm thinking twice about it. I'm probably just fat. I'm kidding. No, no. It I I know. Um, Roxy just came back from Austin. Actually, she was there briefly. I saw too. that post. Yeah. yeah I wish I wish I could have saw her, but yeah, I know she got yeah. she got her own things and stuff. Yeah, you know, she some family stuff. But um, she yeah, she said that it was really, it was she she mentioned it too that it the humidity. So I was like, really okay. Yeah, it's yeah. it's wild. I I I have no idea why, but whatever i mean you know i'm i'm doing some uh indoor gigs you know office gigs here and there which is nice but you know still i'm glad i'm not on set right now i i will say that i'm very i'm very happy that i'm like i got this time to just do my thing a little bit well yeah fish um yeah well good good how's shit on your side of the fucking country I am, dude uh, much better i don't yeah. feel like my face is gonna fall off so i'm really <laughs> covering which has been really nice um yeah. so i'm on the tail end of uh being sick so it's amazing what gotcha. sleep will do for you yeah <laughs> just some good old i love how you just discovered sleep now you're just like listen i've been sleeping so much have you guys um, heard this fucking hype called sleep this shit is weird. Cold sleep. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> Kids are fucking doing it. It's crazy. It's nuts out there. Oh. Yeah. So um, no, I did the I've I've been sleeping a lot, recovering, and I'm starting to feel, I would say I'm like 80%, which is good. So like That's great. 80%. So then that means hopefully in a few I'll be able to like start to get back into doing some work so yeah i feel yeah. like whenever i'm working anyways i'm always idling at 75 to 80 percent you know functioning either way you know yeah so yeah. i yeah. i feel you um all right well are you um are you working on anything right now or are you just kind um of just- no i um well i did finish reading a script that um might be on my radar for October, I think to it was it's like an AD slash produced type situation. Oh, okay. Um, it's a it's interesting. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, it's just very different from what I would do, but I can't judge something based off of like what I would do, you know. So yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm kind of like I don't know. Um, but we'll see it. It's the good thing is it's it's in Los Angeles, so that I would. That's good. It's local. <laughs> do it just because it's here, you know. Yeah. So and I need to start establishing myself here. So I may just take it just because it's like here. Um, yeah. Yeah. But um, 
besides that, uh, I want to get back into managing Gantt Realisms. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That other company that I've forgotten about, basically. I mean, uh, we only have a podcast with 91 episodes podcast, I know, like, around I Get Realisms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that. Um, so that's my hope is that I can well, get good. back into managing that and um, seeing how I can infiltrate. Um, I'm sure Kelly is relieved if she's watching right now. <laughs> she's like, thank God. <laughs> Take this out of my hands. Yeah, so that's 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 the plan is is to to get back into little things like that that kind of took the backseat, um, yeah, because of because of Ursley because Ursley ate everything. So um, that's, yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll see. Um, I I'm gonna take it one day at a time. I finally have like I'm now fully unpacked ish. So. So that was what I was working on, was unpacking, since I didn't actually finish unpacking the last first time. Like, I packed, I basically unpacked just enough where I could, like, be okay in my room. You yeah, know? you but got like, you got some clean shit that will last you for a few more days. For and a while, then you can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, now, I, I feel you. I did I'm the same like, thing. I'm like, oh, I've got to, like, I've got a whole garage full of stuff that needs to like be organized and stuff so that's what i what i did was uh, um go through all of it and just you know sort it through things and it's funny you think you get rid of a lot of stuff until you go and start to repurpose or re-put things where they're supposed to be and stuff. And you're like, actually, I have too much shit still. I have too much shit still. I feel like as I'm getting older, like for whatever reason, I was always able to throw away so much more shit when I was younger than I yeah. can now. Now, yeah. like, I, I don't know if it's because of the responsibility working in an art department or what. I mean, they're mostly yeah. tools anyways. They're not like... Artsy, I feel artsy like shit. You but art people are like hoarders anyway. Well, I became <laughs> one. I, be, like, I, I became me. one. Like, yeah, like, like I, I take offense to that. <laughs> well, because Kelly Penna, friend of the podcast, yeah. kind of taught me like the the art of repurposing like a lot of the same shit that you use either way like you can you can repurpose it in so many Kelly, different ways the hey podcast. there she is Speaking so of, i was Kelly, we're talking about you christine was talking mad fucking shit about you just a few <laughs> minutes ago it was it was insane i we're pretty sure we have to cut it from the podcast it's it's pretty <laughs> yeah um, we met see we manifested that we were like let's just talk we about kelly and then kelly's up here and kelly appeared hi kelly but I was just saying, um, yeah, exactly yeah. what you have. Exactly. That's, that's <laughs> speak of the devil. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. I, I just I recycled everything that I have, especially like working on Grace's set, you know, that I talked about. Like there's a, there's a few shit that I use on a few sets that I was just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking use this. This is gold, <laughs> you know. Regardless yeah. if it's like a like a, a little prop or like you know, some curtain shit or whatever yeah, yeah it's, it's just all a little context kelly the reason why we were talking mad shit about you was because i was telling adam that i finally had time to unpack and i had to have a garage full of stuff that i basically went through this weekend while i was sick and and then i and then adam was like yeah i have all this other stuff and i said well i think our people are all hoarders anyway <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah and i, and I definitely I became that, one <laughs> and then we started talking about you talking to Adam about repurposing things and 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 whatnot and that hoarding is okay. So um so yeah, thank God, thank God we're all caught up now. Um <laughs> kidding. Uh it was just it was such a great explanation. Like it was it was a, an, an additional four more minutes. <laughs> I uh Oh, by the way, do you have a heart out? Uh, well, Roxy. So Roxy's supposed to text yeah. me and tell me, "Hey, I'm ready for the estate sale." So, the, oh yeah, Kelly. So Roxy and I are gonna go to an estate sale. Mm. I 
know that's up your alley, but um, wish you were the here. fuck. It's up. Uh, it's up my alley too, Christine. Yeah. What oh, are you talking about? Yeah, you are people. Yeah, no. I wish you guys could be here. Be no, fun. even even sans art. I love seeing garage sales in garage general. Sales are the shit. I love are fucking sales. rad. I yeah. there was a few that happened just down my block a month ago, and I was yeah. just like, "Let's fucking go!" Got a couple of records. Got a um, it's not in here, but I had like this, like uh, it's like a Sonic the Hedgehog doll that I remember when I was a kid, and I was like, what? "Holy yeah. shit!" They have this and it was like for ten dollars it was amazing i yeah. was like yeah i'm gonna use this it's a little dirty but whatever i'm like yeah i'm I'm taking this let's go um it's, it's funny because <clears throat> coming up this tour i have so much random crap the foam moon tail thing and then like <clears throat> two signs of that neon ursley sign and the um original all of which kelly sign. made uh well no one of them reese made the the one that lights up the sign that lights up oh though and, that sign sorry yeah, yeah. okay so there's right. like so much crap and i'm just like man how do art people do it because i can't even like i only have what i have for my set and it's already too much <laughs> this is a lot of like holding all this stuff like what do i do with all this but um I still haven't figured it out, honestly. Like but it's fun. Yeah. It's fun though. Have you do you go do art people go through their set their stuff and be like, oh, reminisce on like where these things were used? I haven't like worked as long as like Kelly or or Reese or any of those legends have. Uh so I don't I haven't really had I mean I've had like a, a once like like as a result of the first set, like what I would buy, like that's like art department, like a necessity that I wouldn't have thought of, like pre, like if if I didn't work that first set with you and Kelly and all those people. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like a couple of times like that, but um. Yeah. Sort. Well, okay. No, I take that back. So uh. So I remember my 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 uh my cousin and I. Like we made like backyard like Star Wars videos like years ago. Yes. yes. And I feel and like, like every kid does that, right? Yeah, like, but like I mean, like uh I guess so. Well, because like I, we were it, it was my sister's camcorder and I just robbed it from her. Like I just like I stole it like multiple times. Yeah. And, uh my cousin and I, we just like we we shot like backyard like just Star Wars videos. I used like a paper plate and like a cape to like put on top of my head to make it look like Darth Vader. You know, it's Aww. just all black and shit like that. It's yeah, like it, it it's kind of like those type of things that I see that I'm just like, oh shit, okay. I like that, you know. I, I miss that. So I don't yeah. know. Like I'm, I'm pulling so much stuff that I was from storage. So I'm, I'm reseeing all of these things that we use for our facets, and it's been, it's been really cute. So like, <clears throat> right now in the, behind me is like all the, the, the. Uh, you weren't here for it, but I think you met me while I was doing this. But the Earth below, um, <clears throat> the sci-fi. There's a bunch of these printouts that are. Uh, friend of the podcast, Jason Cates, uh, design. So mm. I like I pulled a bunch of those out. Um, I found some stuff that we made for not not your ordinary hero. You came for that, right? Who me? No. Okay. I came See, for I a writer's I block. I literally can't remember what you've been on. Now, anytime like I've adopted somebody, adopted somebody, I just assume they've been on every single project that I've ever been on. Yeah, you you did the same shit because you always confuse me with Brad. Like every time, like you even like even told Brad, it was like, yeah, well, you've been on this set, right? And it's like, no, never, never been on that set. <laughs> and then for me, it's like, yeah, you've you've also been in like Earth Below, and you did Sky Vault with us. And I'm like, He's like, no, <laughs> no, no, never. Like, shit. Yeah, I, I wish I did, I but yeah, no, I, I haven't. Um, <clears throat> but I'm just pulling out all this old uh i have i just fixed the neon sign from photo employment that you don't know anything about but you know of it because you watched it the uh it's, yeah. by gold sign oh okay yeah, yeah so I'm gonna, i want to hang that up somewhere and then um i pulled out a bunch of our old awesome. posters shakespeare on the range you weren't on that one either um what the f i watched I it though 
En route was the one that you were, were the first was en route yeah. the first short that you were on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Dang. You haven't really been with me for that long. No, yeah. I know. That's why like I, I always get like um like a little a little not I mean like I, I get like a little separation anxiety when it comes to like because I've I've done like a few PA gigs already so far. And yeah. I mean, you know, they're they're uh, I'm just gonna be honest, they're left to be desired. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like I, I don't know what it is nowadays. It just it felt like, uh, you know, like there. I mean, there was only one person I knew out of like the three that I worked on. Uh, yeah, three that I worked on. So, um, you need, you need to, to change, change that. I get realisms. Uh, change what, Kevin? Um, yeah. So I, I've always, I've always just like thought, like you know. Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, I should just sit the fuck down and just do my shit for for a little bit because yeah, you know I don't want to I don't want to treat this uh, working with her again. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I know, I know. I well, she lives in L.A. How the fuck yeah. can I? You I know? know, she left. She was just I like, no, I left. You guys, you probably <laughs> missed the episode. Official. I made it official too. But she it was, was like, scary. Adam, I had I hadn't made it official. So I think it was really it was a, I forgot that so many people I never really told anybody that was here. Well, it was and like it, a shotgun so, addition. It was like a shotgun decision, right? Like it was yeah. just you sort of just like kind of. Yeah, went and, flying by the seat of your pants. Yeah. And I didn't want to say that was there because like. I was basically gone from L.A. I was in Austin for like two of the months that I was moved in LA, you know? So, right. Yeah. So I was like, until I know that I'm going to be spending, like I'm here, I'm not moving for a bit, then I'll make the announcement. So Roxy <laughs> was the one who actually was like, Hey, you should, uh, you should say something. So people know that you're here. So you start getting jobs here. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's fine. So I made that, that formal announcement that I am here in LA. Yeah. So and I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, I'm gonna say I'm, here because yeah. because I'm famous for this. I feel like I'm never gonna work. <laughs> no, well yeah, no, I, I know that feeling though, because yeah. I have that feeling here as well in Austin. I mean, like that like it's kind of part of the reason why I thought I'm thinking like this is why I'm getting PA gigs. I'm not getting as many art gigs because they don't need a mediocre art person. Oh, <laughs> you know, I don't, I, I'm not trying to fucking trying to get some pity here, but I'm just, I'm saying like, I've only been a couple of years in, you know, yeah. well, three technically, but like still, like, I'm just like, I, I'm fresh. I'm new. Like, I don't, I'm not like this, uh, incredible fucking art person. Okay. Whatever, Christine. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I agree, Kelly. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm glad you're in L.A. I'm sad that we haven't been working together. But I know we are, though. That's the thing. Like, I know I know at some point we're going to we we're going to work together. We I just got to I got to um, figure out how to raise money for the next one after I fully emotionally recover from the number that Ursley has done to me. So, <laughs> yeah, LA, it's just hard. Yeah, but I got to yeah. figure out what, what else is going to stick. I, I want to write something that's a lot simpler um, to do. More <laughs> than Ursley. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, I'm not new too, but I'm in South Carolina. I was going to move to LA, but the pandemic happened. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's like a weird influx. I think a lot of people from LA have moved out to, ironically, Austin. Um, and then, Which, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm very sorry. I mean, like, <laughs> Californians are the absolute worst, and like some of the mm-hmm. some of the most, yeah, some of the most wild Californians are 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 here, and it shows in the fucking roads because they're out of their minds when <laughs> oh, they're driving. They're so bad. So, yeah, driving they're out of their minds. Yeah, so bad. Well, L.A., um, you're gonna experience it too, dude. It's gonna it's gonna be like the fucking it's it's gonna be like Mad Max out there. I can only yeah, just fucking LA, imagine. LA's it's bad. Uh, it's not it's not great. Thing, the one thing I don't miss and i'm getting a lot of right now which is the lovely traffic so bad. yeah yeah but i'm like learning i'm at that learning period where i'm like okay when 
let me try going out at this time, seeing what happens. Oh shit, not doing that again. You know, that that kind of like yep. trying to figure out where the sweet spot is when like things die down or you know. Which so. is impossible, like living in the Bay Area. Because yeah, there's no sweet spot with that. Uh, Kevin says, I believe I got hesitant because people were moving out. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people a lot of people were moving out as a result of the pandemic, which is understandable, I guess. Yeah, I, I had agree. a lot of a lot of people in LA who were in LA that moved out. They just had a bad experience during the pandemic in LA because everything was very shut down. But then again, I don't know like how different that is with everywhere else that was also very shut down so who knows? yeah yeah but um yeah i mean i feel like you just got to make the most of any place that you're at you know i think there's no perfect one perfect place with la it is ex- so fucking expensive everything is so expensive um, yeah, I mean, well, I, I hate to say it, the country's itself is just it's getting expensive it, and it, yeah. it kind of it it shows like it's it's showing very vividly between gas prices and whatever. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like, just name it, it. It's going up. It's expensive. You know? Everything is expensive, which yeah. is why you see the stock market like as as like it's like almost like a s- downward slope. Like, you know, it's it's getting it's not great, ladies and gentlemen. But here's the 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 greatest part about about this country and us americans and that is the fact that like there are so many creative fucking people out there that it's it's all going to show at some point in someone's art and i'm very excited about that and i feel like everybody should gauge that and everybody should focus on that no matter what at all costs like you just We cannot just dwell into this like Biden sucks. Trump sucks. We can't fucking politics. Ah, Stop. Just get to the fucking art and let if you were that invested into it, it will speak for itself in that art. I trust me. It's all there. Like I've seen I've heard music albums, too, that like for whatever reason, like I never really cry when I listen to music. It's very. I'm not saying like I don't cry, motherfucker. I, every time I watch a notebook, I'm fucking I'm bald. <laughs> like, Everybody, yeah, the other notebook. Yeah. But when I'm listening to music, it's different. I guess it's like, I don't know. But like this was like I listened to Kendrick Lamar's newest album. I heard it was really good. It is an like even just thinking about it like gives me goosebumps. Like it is okay. just it's such a powerful, fucking potent ass album that speaks on everything today, the history of Kendrick. Um, Kevin saying the boys was uh, doing that as an example. You are absolutely right. It'll come in out in your work. hundred percent. I, and you're right. The boys did do that. It's a, it's a show on Amazon for those of you who don't know. Um, And yeah, like it's, it just, you kind of have to just like let, let your art just kind of speak your truth and speak your honesty. And as long as you remain faithful to that, whatever medium it is, it could be fucking woodworking. It doesn't matter. Like just, if you remain faithful to it, it will, it will show. And that's like what we need to focus on. And I know it's like, Adam, it's fucking easier said than done, bitch. I got to do two jobs in order to get pay fucking rent and shit. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I'm also there with you. I am broke as a joke, you know, but I just know that like doing shit like this, like fucking podcasting and recording and now writing it's, it's, it, there's something about it. There's something in the air that I'm just like, Oh, okay. This makes sense to me. Just like stepping onto the, my first set as horrible as it was for a lot of people on that set It was the best fucking time because it made me realize like, oh, this was what I've been missing out on. And this is great. And this is what I've always needed to do. This was what my path is laid out for. And I need to walk through it instead of just be like, well, I got to do this because of money. And I got to we're all losing money, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) 
<laughs> I hate to say it, money is becoming uh, monopoly cash at this point. It's it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's getting ridiculous out there. I'm sorry. It's getting ridiculous yeah. out there. But um, yeah, anyways, that's just my point. It's just like, get get invested in your own work, please, everybody. It's Life is too fragile and too short for us to just give a shit about, you know, well, fuck, money, you know, everything money. It's like, yeah, I get it. I'm right there with you, but we can't lose touch with what what our calling is, you know? It's been fun watching a string of content that's coming out that was made during the pandemic. Um, yeah. I just recently watched Jim Cummings. I'm a big Jim Cummings fan. Huge. You are. Yeah. I, I like um, Jim Cummings too. You got me into him a lot, a lot. His yeah. new film, Beta Test, is quite good. Haven't seen it. It's good? He's oh, good. Down. And he and what I'm noticing from the string of pandemic made films is this place where the director does multiple things. And I have such mad respect for directors that do that. And what I mean is like Jim Cummings edited the beta test. He also co-wrote it, co-directed it as well. It's not that much different from what we did with Ursley, where I, you know wrote, edited. It's just interesting because I remember 15 to 20 years ago where it was like, if you see a film that where the director was like in four different positions, it was like a big like red flag to mm, not watch mm-hmm. it because it's like, oh, it's going to be bad quality and stuff. And it was a like big faux pas. Okay. But now, wow. but now I feel like it's trending a different way. I feel like there's a pride with directors that do everything. I, I believe, I, I mean, I come from that. And I it, I don't know if that's because of, well, it is a d- democ- the democratization of media and the accessibility of technology and stuff is just making it so much more accessible and easier for directors to control their own work. And really it's out of necessity um, because there's, so my, it's a cycle, it's all a circle. Yeah, uh, so, it is. Because of the democratization of technology, it's a lot cheaper to go in and make stuff. But now that because of that, there's a flood of content that comes. And because there's a flood of content, films aren't making their money back because distributors have the upper hand because there's less distributors for more content. And then it's driving the budgets down, which is then increasing the number of directors that have to know how to do everything to be able to afford to make a film. And it's this slew of films are coming out where like i just so jim's was one i just saw and i need to go watch this other film that someone this is metamorphosis um but like he randomly emailed me and was like hey can you like order my film that just came out on amazon i was like yeah sure let's do a film swap basically i was like if you order ursley i'll watch yours too so it's like that's awesome it's pretty cool but it's neat because it's like okay there's this is generation of filmmakers that and i think we're going to see it more so coming out of the pandemic because so many people couldn't work with big sets you had to limit the number of crew the number of people that you had association with and so because of that we're just seeing a lot of content where it's one person doing like five jobs it's Mm. it's quite fascinating i um jim's film was very very good uh I want to see other stuff that was made during the pandemic and see how it kind of like, I would love to have a pandemic film showcase of some sort. Can you make that happen? Austin short film showcase guys. (laughs) But I just think that'd be cool. Uh, Suma, yay, my bestie Suma is, I visited Suma in, um, in Seattle. Suma. Nice. She was nice. awesome. She just finished her radiation. But can Suma. you you have can you I'm sorry, can you repeat what you were saying about the um about the, the pandemic film thing? What repeat that one more time? Oh, that I would love to I would be great if there was actually like a festival that was uh, or just a set selection of films that were features that were done during the pandemic. Oh just, right, yeah. I would just it'd be fun to see like what kind of creativity resulted from that. Right. Like, yeah. hundred percent. 
we had to minimize locations, you know, we had to minimize. So there's a lot of things that are being shot in like one location, you know, mm-hmm. type thing. and, and uh, minimize crew, like Kevin was saying, Malcolm and Mary, they had a small crew. Yeah. And they shot that. So like, how does that affect art and, and whatnot? So hi, Suma. yeah. So uh, yes, I, I visited Suma in Seattle. Seattle's badass. Have you been to Seattle? No, I've always wanted to though. Yeah. I was in Seattle and I was like, I chose the wrong city to move to. <laughs> oh, you like Seattle that much? I loved Seattle, mm-hmm. but the only problem is there's no film in Seattle. So I have to. Yeah. A friend of mine kept wanting me to go to Seattle because she lives, she lives there. So like, um, I I kept wanting to to visit, but like never got around to it. And I, I just always thought I'm like, Seattle is just gonna be fucking wet all the time, and it's just gonna fucking bother me at some point. Like, yeah, Kevin, you're right. It does rain a lot. I think to the point to so much that our one of our mutual friends, Suma and I's mutual friend, um, Chelby, they are moved. They were from Austin, moved to Seattle, and now are planning to move back to Austin. Uh, this is Superstore. Did a whole season during the pandemic and wove it into the story. It was in t- it was intense. Oh, cool! Mm-hmm. Superstore. I haven't seen that. I I need to I need to catch up on watching stuff. Um, yeah. Kevin, have you watched? You should watch Ursley because that was done during the pandemic and because selfish, selfish, selfless, selfless, uh, selfish uh, plug. That's what the our podcast is about so oh yeah yeah you should, yeah. You should totally watch, watch it, it. Yeah. Every, no a, not just kevin everybody, everybody. watch watch early what are you talking yeah. about yeah you get, you get, get, get it. it it's on itunes it's on amazon it's everywhere just google it it, it rent it it's gonna be uh superstore i don't know sumo where's where uh is superstore on is that it's on it's Hulu nbc or? so it's probably gonna be on the peacock app oh. so um yeah i mean Again, that's like talk about oversaturation of content. Um, yeah. yeah, it like there's there's Peacock, there's fucking you know I I got Criterion Channel, which is fucking amazing, Hulu. by the way. Hulu. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin. Uh, okay. Superstore is on Hulu. Hulu okay, Superstore. gotcha, gotcha. I haven't seen that either, so I'm gonna put it on my list of stuff to watch. Superstore. Uh, Ursley, no, um, E R. So you look at Suma just spelled the E R Z U L I E. It's also on my T-shirt. Look at that, conveniently spelled out for you, Kevin. It's all. It's on Amazon, iTunes, all that jazz. Get it now. Get it. It's about a mermaid and feminism. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I, I've watched a lot of shit, um, recently because, like, I've, I've noticed that, like. I like rewatching shit that I've always watched on TV, like yeah. over and over, but I don't realize uh, Kevin says, okay, thanks for the heads up. I'll check those out. Please do. Please, 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 please. please do. And then like, come on um, next week and tell us about it. Yes. 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 So um, um, I'm losing my train of thought. This is not great. I hate this. Um, I want to die. Uh, um, kill me. talking about content done during the pandemic. Let me tell you that they uh brain fart switch. <laughs> I, it was it, I was onto something. I was onto something, and then I fucked it up. I fucked it up. Um, <laughs> and it's good. It's good to know that uh, Christine doesn't listen to me. Too. I was listening um, to you. Uh, because I needed help. Uh, I I think I saw your post on it. Thanks. Uh, sorry, my schedule changed on Sunday, so I won't be on when y'all start, but I'll hop on when I can next Sunday. It's cool. cool. Any anytime, just, Kevin. Yeah. Anytime you hop on, you can just be like, guess what? I watched the film. I want to talk even, about it. Yeah, you can even. We're on Facebook. Go and get realisms on Facebook. Uh, we're live there all the time, uh, not just Instagram. So if you want to catch us in the comments, we'll respond to you, um, and we'll we'll share it live and stuff. Um. Oh, movies that I saw. That's that's what I was talking about. So uh, I haven't. So I've watched a lot of movies like on TV when I was younger that, that you were, were just super that I'm rewatching now. But I didn't realize how severely cut these movies are. 
like when they air on TV. So when you air on TV, like in any kind of shorter, they cut them shorter for commercials, for vulgarity uh, and sex, like anything yeah. like cursing or sex. It's just like they're they're It just gets cut out and shit, which, you know, there's there's every so often like, you know, they kind of pick and choose their movies. They're not going to go for like the raunchiest fucking movies. But some channels after like 11 or midnight, they play like, you know, after dark movies, like they'll play oh. like like the the crazy ass, like, you know, um, I don't know, like Requiem for a Dream kind of, you know, movies oh, and shit like that. I can't watch that again anymore. It's, yeah, it's intense. That was, one, that was a one-time thing. But the one movie that I saw all the time on TV, and it blew my fucking mind, and I know we're kind of, we, I'm talking about a high-budget film. I know it's, you know, it's not on brand, but it's still a great story nonetheless, and I didn't really take it as seriously as I, as I did when I watched it when I was younger. Watch the movie called Heat came out in 1995. Oh, Heat. Yes. It's Al Pacino, have, Robert De Niro, and Val fucking Kilmer, dude. I need to rewatch that. I'm gonna write it that is. Down. Well, here's the thing. It's a three-hour film. So it's here, like, like if, if y'all don't really have the attention span of just like a three-hour film, which, by the way, like we're in a binging TV generation of, of, of us. Why is it that we binge TV? But like when anything is like over two hours, most people just check out from watching the movie straight up. I, I noticed that. No, I don't know what it is. I was talking to my friends about it and I was making fun of them. I'm like, so you mean to tell me that you binged like a whole season of Game of Thrones in, literally in one night. But the idea of watching Avengers that is two and a half hours is daunting. <laughs> like how? I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, like, am I out of my mind? I mean, like, well, I think it, no, no, no. I think that's that's how TV gets you is that you go in expecting I'm just gonna watch thirty minutes, I'm just gonna watch an hour, right? And so right. that's how they hook you. Yeah. And then you go and you're like, well, what's another thirty minutes? That's fine, I can do it. So like, what it's what TV has done is work with that human like our current generations need to consume short form content as and then but they've built it i mean if you if you binge watch a full thing you're watching a whole damn story right and so but it, they're tricking you per se right so 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 it's like yeah, yeah. kelly said bite-sized candy so it's like right uh, you know, when you're like on a diet and you're like, okay, I'm just going to eat this tiny piece of this cookie. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, well, that was one little tiny piece. So I'll just eat the other small piece. And then by the time you're done, you've eaten the whole damn cookie. So, but if like, I showed you the yeah. same cookie and I was like, this thing is a thousand calories. It's a psychological thing. Right. I'll only have a few. Five hours later, the bag is empty, says Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's me all the time. I don't I don't know my limitations. Once a bag is opened, I'm I'm following through. That's the thing. When I eat Ben and Jerry's, I always throw away the cap because I'm not a fucking quitter. I'm not a quitter. I follow through <laughs> yeah, with my Ben and Jerry's. Uh, um, but it's psychological. It um, is. I think more so than anything, but Kelly so brings up a point here, that yes. It, Here's, it is weird to find a spot where to have like a bathroom break. And they used to have intermissions and films and stuff. And right. But that's my question, though. So is that a problem in the lack of the film trying to get your attention in the first 15 anyways, rather than it's just, well, it's too long of a movie? Because if nobody saw the runtime and they just saw like the first 10 minutes of something or the first 15 minutes of something, then if it hooks you, then it hooks you. you. Should You should follow through with it. And Kevin says, but let me ask, how do you explain people binging Stranger Things with film length? So that's what I'm talking about. Mm. So that's exactly exactly what I'm saying right now. So you, you're basically, you have the content and it captures your attention. So yeah, you're going to follow through with that entire episode along with five more episodes after that. But when you're watching a movie like Star Wars, that's almost three hours long, it's like, no, thank you. It's like you're already committed to that investment anyways with that story. You can take 15 minutes 
out of something mm-hmm. and then really like because that's what they capture you with the shows anyways too yeah like if they don't capture you in the structure thing too i don't know like uh tv structure versus narrative structure like i know in shorts they have you like every you something needs to happen every at least every five minutes is like how we have sure how we are programmed so when we're making stuff and then like with a narrative it's like every 15 pages right um yeah pretty much give or take 20 every 15 so every 15 to 20 minutes something major happens but if a tv thing is like let's say 30 minutes an hour it's faster it's a little bit faster that you're breaking it up so it's maybe like every 10 minutes or some or that's something's happening and there's a hook too at the very end that gets you to continue to watch more yeah. stuff right it's that right. like hook and so I, it's all psychological in my opinion but like that's what i'm saying like i, they I should think just, like for movies just just they they wouldn't be able to get away with it but i'm just saying like just not put the wrong time i that's <laughs> I, that's that's my suggestion but yeah you're right i don't there's no way they're gonna not do that but yeah, I mean, I agree though. Like, I, I just like, I think like you're, you're kind of belittling the, the entire experience of it. And also, we're, we're in the digital age of streaming, motherfucker. We can pause it and come back. <laughs> you know, like we, we don't have to, we don't have to constantly just, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's hard for some instances, though, but like the binging happens accidentally. Like, right, right. You, when you commit to a two and a half hour, three hour movie, you are committing that you are intentionally setting three hours of time for yourself. Binging doesn't yeah. happen that way. You're not intentionally setting three hours of time. You just accidentally set three hours of time because you kept adding time to it. Do you see what I'm saying? So that psychological conditioning of, well, do I want to watch this one episode of a show that I may or may not binge or watch a three hour movie? Exactly. Yeah, that's that's a good point. That's, that's what it that's is. That's a good point. It's, yeah. It's all psychological. It's like, yeah, even now with me too, like I have to be like, okay, I am committing one o'clock to five or four <laughs> o'clock to watch yeah. this three hour movie. And that's when like business Fair enough. are. And like, that's when things are open. And like, do I really want to do that? Because if I use this time, it's gonna be dark and then, you know, all this other stuff versus like, oh yeah, it's only an hour, I'll watch that and be like, oh, that was really good. Well, did any, did any of my friends call within the last hour or two to go hang out? You know, I guess yeah. not, it's just me and my pajamas. Yeah. And I don't feel like going out anyway. All right, let's watch another one. You know what I'm saying? And then like- Yeah, because we later. might as well, yeah. No, I get it. Um, yeah. Kevin says, I'll add what people want to talk about. My friends and I have watched Thor, Love and Thunder and the boys. And I've had more conversations about the boys over Thor for sure, because it's a TV show. Like, yeah, there's way more content to literally like it's Expand upon. eight hours of content that you're like, you can just, you know, gush over rather than like a, yeah, like then a two hour film, two hour and 20 minute film that um you know is is essentially just a taika waititi film <laughs> you know and it's the, the yeah. thing is that like it's the whole like we want absolutes yet we don't right because with the film it's absolutely done like that's it uh, unless it's set for a sequel so there's right. really not much point to talk too much more about it because you can't form your own opinions about what's going to happen next or or you, you may discuss like if you didn't understand something or you really liked it and there's concepts and themes and something that you will you want but like with a tv show yeah. it's like you get to play almost your own writer a little bit because oh, right. you yeah. don't know what's going to happen next so it's fun it's a good conversation piece to discuss like and be your if i were to write the next episode how would I want the characters to go? Or like, I have this connection with this particular character and I feel like this character would do this, you know? So so I think because of that, there's so much more room for conversation. That's something I I need to get into series writing. 
that's that's not my goal it's literally it's on my it's a goal. daunting it's a daunting fucking task like it it i mean like unless like you're willing to work with a writer's room which i mean there's that's always an option yeah. um and that can really help you know it, it could also make or break your your content too <laughs> but um uh no, there's something else I was going to I was going to say, though, uh, when it comes to content. Yeah. But I think you're right, though. Like, I, I think like, yeah, because more content equals more conversation, I guess. With, yeah. But like, to, when it, when to it go with to your mind to what you're talking about with like serious writing, why it's so daunting is because there are so many more possibilities and storylines and. Well, the character threading in yeah, just threading. you have fucking 15 characters, Christine, that you have to juggle and shit, you know, like you can't have a it's not like a movie where you can get away with maybe two main characters, you know, right. you can yeah. even get away with one in certain circumstances. But the series is very hard to just write it for one person right. like that's really, really hard. But if you can do it with 15 different characters and they all have their own arcs and their thread and their, their, you know, it all weaves into the plot line seamlessly, you know, um, understand their wants and needs and stuff, the, the reveals and the reversals, all that writer hokey pokey. Yeah, like, that's awesome. But I mean, like, that's like everything to juggle. That's like, a, right. you look like a, you look like, you know, like you, you see a detective's wall and you see like post-it yes. notes and like threading yeah, and shit like that. Threading. Like, that's what it yep. looks like, it, yeah, you know, in your brain. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 Totally. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I, I want to get I do want to get into that. So um, it's weird because. OK, this is something that's really weird. Like, it's really weird for me not to be like already knowing that I have like three jobs lined up, but like. <laughs> But I purposely did that to myself so that I could write, but it feels yeah. weird. It feels really weird. I'm because so, you was, you set that self up for yourself or yeah, I set I set it up to do this so that I can get into the mindset for writing. Cause it's in it's very difficult to write when you are like, okay, I'm gonna write for a week and then peace out i'm gone for two months you know it didn't really work <laughs> yeah well. that doesn't yeah. yeah and also you kind of have to have that creative mindset and you of can... doing nothing yeah it, essentially yeah yeah i've listened to like m night Shyamalan and different writers and their their podcasts and stuff and they're like yeah there's days where i literally need to sit there and do nothing to write to be yeah. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. like in a, it's just a weird yeah. Kevin said what? that he's doing a graphic novel series and he's yeah. it. It's pretty cool, Kevin. It is it's super cool. cool. But sometimes yeah. like it's whenever I find myself into that funk where I'm just literally just staring at my wall, literally into the abyss, I just I have to watch something. Like, and that's yeah. why like I put on a movie, like, or you know. Even even as stupid as like a show like Rick and fucking Morty, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Like, I just I want to watch something that's a little bit like out of out of my head creatively that I can just ingest. And I can come back, circle back around, and I always find it that I can engage with my work a little better after mm -hmm. I just give myself a breathing room to just let my brain think, let my brain just like disengage from it just for a little bit. And then once I'm done with it, get a whatever cup of coffee, a snack or whatever, come back. And then I'm ready to just like, okay, here's, here's what I need to focus on, you know, and you just yeah. shift your focus, whatever you're doing, you know? Yeah. Uh, mine is usually if I do something mundane. So like, Oh, driving. chores and shit. Yeah. yeah oh, or like gotcha. or driving or like organizing or something. Yeah. Things that, don't take much mental space but like our physical and like but i i can go on autopilot with it with the task you mean or yeah, with, with writing task, yeah yeah the task and but it's just enough like mental break to yeah. be able to like also because you're disengaging from your writing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so 
And it's only like a brief moment that you need, right? Like once, once you disengage with it, then, you know, it's like, have you ever seen the show Mad Men? Probably not. It's okay. Oh, oh, you have? have? You remember? Okay. So you remember second season when Don Draper, uh, or no, maybe third season when Peggy started working advertising with Don Draper. Yes. And she was like, how do you come up with these quips? How do you come up with these ideas? And he's like, just think about it really hard like extremely hard and then just forget about it just forget about it just just let it not just be in your consciousness let it not be your existence and let it not control you just forget about it go smoke a cigarette go to the diner whatever you have to do just don't think about it then in an hour or two or maybe half the day it'll come right back it will it will come back and something will just snap into your judgment and then you you call what you need or in Don's case, he just drinks in the middle of the <laughs> afternoon, which is insane still. But, you know, I, I digress, you know, yeah. um, that's a great I, that's a good reference. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah it's about it I don't remember if it's the second or third it. season, but like I, it, I do remember that scene. Yeah, it, it remained part of my my thought process of just like, oh, you just have to disengage for just just a little bit, just a brief time, not enough where like, because then you're falling into procrastination territory when you're just like, yeah, I'm just not going to deal with it for the rest of the day. And fuck it. I'll just work on it tomorrow. You know, it's like, (laughs) you're not trying. (laughs) He's like, yeah, (laughs) but that's, that's, that's where I'm like worried about like balance was because like, I'm taking a break right now and this is very rare for me. And so I'm like, oh, I'm not doing anything. And it feels really weird. And I'm like, what, to what point, is it where I'm like actually doing this for mental health reasons or am I just procrastinating? (laughs) Well, and sometimes you need to procrastinate for your mental health reasons, you know, like sometimes maybe it's just, it's best for you to disengage fully maybe for, for the day. Who knows? Everybody has their own process. That's the thing. It's like, it's really hard to take writing advice when you just, you haven't rolled through the punches of what, writing entails at least at least for my benefit like i always read like shit on instagram and i just fucking thumb through instagram through like different fucking quotes and like so many people or even youtube my algorithms just a whole bunch of like directors and writers like here's my writing process da, 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 you know and then i i'm just like okay maybe i should adapt that and then I think about it and I'm like, no, that's too stupid. I don't want to deal with that. And then I move on to the next thing. But like you just you sort of because your rhythm is your rhythm and it's it's whatever what you make of it will get you to that goal. Right. Whatever yeah. it is. And maybe I don't know, maybe you got to play video games for five, six hours and then you can engage with your shit oh, man. for like eight hours. You I know? just tried vr stuff and that stuff is that's just nuts isn't it yeah it's fun it was so fun it was Mm -hmm. crazy anyway i digress um i actually have to wrap it up because i uh me too i have to let my dog out perfect there you go so let's land it let's fucking land it ladies and gentlemen you know you know why we're here you know you know why this podcast (laughs) exists and that's because we got the fucking get realism's book right here ladies and gentlemen it's Online at getrealisms.com. What are you waiting for? You're here. You watch it thus far. Everybody in the chat, thank you so much for lighting up the chat. But pick up a book if you yes, need it. Kevin, thanks for participating. And like next time when you watch the film, please jump on one of our episodes. Yes, and start please. A conversation with us because we just want to know what you think and the good and bad stuff. It doesn't have to be all good. Like we know it's not a perfect film at all. So, and we want to make it better because it's going to be it there's going to be a sequel so yes we want um, your input so ursleyfilm.com to to rent uh or google ursley uh e-r-z-u-l-i-e mm-hmm. and um yeah pick up a get real this book get a poster we love you we'll we'll see you next week hopefully same time uh we can't guarantee that though because we are uh, filmmakers and we, we yep, we're filmmakers and so, things change all the F and time. <laughs> it's not because we're lazy and we don't want to do this. We do want to do this. It's our therapy session. We don't want to miss therapy. Um, 
sometimes we have to work, <laughs> yes. you know, and it sucks. Thank you for joining our, our public therapy session. We love you guys. Films. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining our therapy session. We love you. We'll see you next time. Peace, everybody. Peace. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you so Kelly, much. You. Bye, Kelly. I love you. Thank you, Kevin. Bye. 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 Bye.